All right, let's talk about how to train speed, how to get faster. So first thing, we need to figure out what speed is. So speed is the rate at which someone or something is able to move or operate. I like to break down speed into three different components. So we have acceleration, top end speed, and deceleration, okay? So acceleration is the increase in rate of speed, sorry, increase in the rate or speed of something. So you're speeding up. Top end speed is your maximal velocity. So that's the absolute fastest you can move. So if you think about sprinting, uh, like in the 100 meter, that's your top speed. And then deceleration is a decrease in the rate of speed of something. So you need the deceleration for your change of direction. So acceleration, increase in the rate of speed of something. So the biggest thing for acceleration is it's dependent upon your ability to control your direction of force. So you need to be able to control where you're going. And with acceleration, our focus is more on driving forwards as opposed to up. So we wanna make sure we're directing force more horizontally than vertically during the acceleration phase. Basically, you're pushing forward instead of pushing up. From a movement perspective, we want more of a piston-like movement as opposed to a cyclical mo motion, like with top end speed. So piston-like, just like in these switches, it's driving straight down, okay? Just like in the wall drill, driving straight down. So our focus is the foot comes out and then drives back. What happens with a lot of athletes is it's more of a cycle and that's when we get into top speed stuff. So we don't want that initially because it's gonna slow you down because it's wasted movement, okay? So things we wanna focus on are that direction of force. So one thing that works for me is thinking about driving my head forwards as I move, okay? So my head is driving forwards, not going up. There's gonna be longer contact time. So your feet are gonna be on the ground longer during the first three steps. It's just gonna, you're gonna take more time because we're trying to generate more power. Another issue I see with athletes is that they move the feet really fast, but they don't actually go anywhere. So we need the power and the direction. So we're gonna take a little bit longer on the ground and the last thing is, is that's piston-like movement because that ensures that you're actually driving forward without wasted movement, okay? So one of the things, one of the issues that I have with A skips is you're lifting the knee really fast, but you're not really going anywhere. If you wanna generate speed, you have to drive the foot down quickly. And it needs to be down quickly, like back and under you as opposed to straight up and down because if it's going straight up and down, that's gonna direct all your force upwards, which is gonna make you way slower. So what I like to do to train acceleration, we have these bucket holds. So you're just holding that position, you're holding that stance. We can add a weight to it if it feels good. You can do an overhead weight. Then we go into bucket switches. So that's the next level. So now we're actually driving that foot back down. He is on driving it down not driving the other knee up. So we're pushing down into the ground. Once again, if it feels good, you can add weight to it or load to it. Wall drill is another one that I like. So we're just leaning up against the wall. It's almost like the same as the bucket switches. We're leaning up against the wall. The foot comes out, the knee comes up. We wanna get that knee to 90 degrees. And then we're driving that foot back down underneath our hips. Okay, we need to drive the foot under the center of mass. That's where we're building that speed. And then the last one is a dead leg. So it's very similar to an A skip, but instead of focusing on the snap up, we're focusing on driving down into the ground. Okay. We're looking at top end speed. So as a field athlete, this is not necessarily what you get into a lot of we're more focused on the acceleration but the higher your top end speed 
the faster you can accelerate if you can do it properly. So we want to build that top end speed to get faster. So your top end speed is your maximal velocity, the absolute fastest you can move. Okay. So two key things that we need are coordination. So being able to move our body appropriately, efficiently. So the feet, the legs move with the arms, the core is stable, we're transferring force. And then the ability to orient forces appropriately. So that's how we're placing it. Okay. So with top end speed, there's a lot more vertical stuff because we're covering more ground. So we need a little bit more vertical force to keep propelling forwards. So coordination is the ability to have the arms and legs in sync and moving smoothly. If you've ever seen sprinters, good sprinters, everything looks so smooth and relaxed. It's like they're moving in slow motion, okay? And then as we're in top end speed, our contact time is gonna go down. So we wanna get off the ground fast. So we're thinking drive down, back up, back up, back up. We're looking at more vertical forces relative to acceleration, which allows us to get into that cycle. So now we have that nice cycle instead of just that piston movement, okay? So things to focus on, we wanna be fluid and smooth. So we want to be feeling smooth at top speed, like we're floating across the ground. So you're not muscling through it. One of the issues I see with athletes is they're muscling through it. It looks forced. Okay. A lot of athletes actually run faster. If you tell them to go 90% than hundred percent because they're not trying as hard. So when you're going top speed, you want to focus on being smooth and relaxed. The other thing is we want to focus on fast off the ground. So we want to think about the ground like lava and we're trying to get across it as fast as we can. So think about driving down fast, bang, bang, bang. Okay. So some things to work on that is speed hops, single leg hurdles, and then actual sprinting. If you want to get better, if you want to get faster, you have to actually sprint. You can't just do drills. You have to actually get into the action of sprinting because that's how you're going to teach your body coordination. I like the single leg hurdles and the speed hops because it forces that single leg coordination. And the better you get at that, the faster you're going to be able to move on two legs. Okay. And if you want to take a look at some of these drills, shoot me a message and I can send you what the single leg hurdles and speed hops look like. And then one of the last ones, is deceleration. So deceleration is decrease in the rate of speed of something. So this is crucial for your change of direction. All court or field sport athletes have a lot of change of direction in your sport. You need to be able to change direction. And to do that better, you need to be able to decelerate and then reaccelerate quickly. Okay. So one of the biggest things with deceleration is being able to absorb force efficiently. So deceleration is key for change of direction and also injury prevention. So you need to be able to absorb force. The best way to work on absorbing force is to do different jumps, okay? So we can look at stepping off the box into a depth drop. We can look at just a straight up broad jump. You have lateral hop, vertical, horizontal. Jumping forces you to decelerate because as soon as you hit the ground, you're stopping. So the better you can absorb that force from the jumps, the more it's going to translate into that speed and change of direction. So with deceleration, we need to focus on getting into a good position. So we need to put our bodies in an appropriate position. So if we're looking at jumping, that landing position, uh, the DB starting position. So the chest is over the toes. Okay. We want to be, want to have the feet under the center of mass because that's how you're going to be able to change direction quickly. So traditionally after deceleration, there's a need to reaccelerate. So by putting ourselves in a good position, we're going to be able to break out faster. So a wide receiver that can run great routes is going to be putting themselves putting their body in a better position to accelerate out of turns. Like if they're running a 10 yard in, okay. Linebackers that are able to make plays 
are able to backpedal, change direction quickly to make that play. Running backs finding holes, it's all about changing direction. It's all about being in good positions to be able to decelerate, stop, and then reaccelerate. So the better you can absorb forces, the better you're going to be able to decelerate and prevent yourself from getting into a position where you could be injured. Okay. What happens with a lot of non-contact ACL tears is they plant in a funny position and then the knee bends the wrong way, which forces trauma, which causes the ACL to snap. So if you can put yourself in a position where your feet are under your center of mass and you're in control of your body, you're way less likely to get injured. Okay. So things to focus on, we want to make sure we're in a good position. We want to make sure we're able to absorb force and stay in control of our body. Okay. So we want to make sure that we're able to control our landings. We're able to get into a good position to drive back out. The other thing is we want to keep our feet under our center of mass. Okay. So keep your feet under your body. If we look at this change of direction, we can see that that inside leg is planted under the chest, which allows me to drive back out. So we want to focus on being in control and being in a good loaded position. Okay. You can also see on the jumps how the chest stays over the toes. We want to keep that chest over the toes because that's just a good athletic position. Basically, keeping the feet under the center of mass just means be in a good athletic position. Be a good athlete. So how to train deceleration? So what I like to do is death drop. So anything when we're stepping off that box, loading that force, we can progress it from just a straight up death drop into a death drop double leg, ooh, into a death drop double leg hop. You can do a death drop vertical jump a whole bunch of plyometrics. So anything like a standing broad jump, a lateral hop, this vertical horizontal vertical is gonna be great because we're working on absorbing that force and transferring it, okay? With what I really like about these vertical horizontal vertical is that you're able to control that deceleration because you have to stop before you change direction. So you go up, control, forward, control, up, control. And the better you get at that, the better you can change direction. And then the last one is just change of direction drills. So something like a 5105 pro agility or a lateral hop. We're just changing directions, uh, three cone drill, all that stuff focused on being able to change direction and being able to decelerate and then reaccelerate. Okay. That was a quick run through for how to train speed, how to get faster. If you have any questions, you can drop them in the messages and I'll see them or drop them in the chat.